September in Oklahoma can be pretty rough on all of us who suffer from allergy problems because this is the time of the year when ragweed is in the peak production and dispersal of all of its pollen. Would you believe that one ragweed plant can release up to one billion pollen grains? So this is just an incredible amount of pollen blowing around out there and giving a lot of us hay fever. Well, ragweed is the most allergenic plant in all of North America. Here in Oklahoma, we have four different species of ragweed, and I just want to take a little time and get you a little more familiar with those. Right here, this tall plant is giant ragweed. It's actually an annual, regrows from seed every year, and the plants can get up to 12 feet tall, and you can see the leaves here are, are, are pretty large, and they have three to five main lobes. Uh, we call this about, about three lobes, three or, three or four lobes right here. Uh, but fairly good sized leaves on the giant ragweed. Right down here we have another ragweed. This is common ragweed or Ambrosia artemisia folia and you can see the big difference in the leaves it has much more finely divided leaves than the giant ragweed and the plants are also a lot smaller. They only get about three or four feet tall and the common ragweed again is an annual plant. Right down here we have the third species I want to show you. This is western ragweed, and it's actually a perennial species. Uh, so it's going to come back each year from the same underground rootstock. And I'll just pull off a leaf down here just to show you. It's a little bit different than the, uh, the common ragweed in that the leaves aren't as finely dissected. So all three of these ragweeds produce the same irritating po pollen that makes us sneeze. Ragweed likes to, to grow in areas where the soil has been disturbed, such as construction sites, and it's a classic indicator of overgrazed pasture lands. And you can see the giant ragweed here likes to grow along roadsides in the ditches, where there's a little bit more moisture. Well, the culprit that causes us all to sneeze is right up here. These are the male flowers of the ragweed, and you can see they're kind of a not very showy green color. We'll bend one of these over and you can see the little flowers hanging upside down in here. Ragweed is in the daisy family, but you would never know it from looking at these flowers because they don't look anything like a daisy. Well, the flowers we, we hardly even notice and it's kind of like the insects hardly notice these flowers also. So they don't get pollinated by insects. They're pollinated by the wind. So that's where we get all of our allergy problems. And this is true for a lot of allergy causing plants. They don't have showy flowers and they're not pollinated by the insects. The wind does all the pollination and it makes, makes our, uh, our allergies just flare up. There is another plant that is blamed for ragweed this time of the year or blamed for uh, hay fever and allergy problems and that is the goldenrod or solidago species. And this plant, again, has showy flowers, it's insect pollinated, doesn't cause the hay fever. And if you've been afraid to plant flowers in your yard because of allergy problems, a lot of the plants we get at our nurseries and garden centers have big showy flowers that are insect or hummingbird or butterfly pollinated, not pollinated by the wind. So they're not gonna cause you any problems. Well, if you do suffer from allergy problems, there are a few things you can do to, to minimize those. For one thing, you can learn to identify the ragweed and stay away from it. Also, avoid freshly cut fields or roadsides. And if you have to do any mowing, it's a good idea to uh, get someone else that's not as uh, allergic to do that uh, because there's so much ragweed pollen in the air that it settles on our lawns and driveways and sidewalks. And anytime you go out with a lawnmower or a blower, it just stirs up all that dust and pollen and makes, makes it a lot worse for us. If you do have to be outside doing that, uh, I recommend that you wear a dust mask and preferably one that fits really tight. I like these with a metal band on the top that you can uh, bend around the bridge of your nose uh, to make it fit that much tighter. Also avoid irritants such as cigarette smoke and perfume as these will uh, aggravate the uh, allergy symptoms and make you feel a lot worse. Well, for all of these bad things about ragweed, there are a few good points the plants have. They're actually good food for wildlife. A lot of our game birds, such as quail, pheasants, wild turkeys, and prairie chickens, like to feed on the fruits and seeds of the ragweed. 
and also the giant ragweed here can make these these dense stands and it can be really good cover for wildlife especially in the winter time now there's another interesting thing about the giant ragweed and that's in the stems of the plant i'm just going to cut one here and you can see this little bit of uh, coloration here around the node well if you take that cut stem and press it to a piece of paper you can see that red stain you can actually make a red dye from ragweed it's an interesting bit of information about the ragweed well i hope now that we've showed you a little bit about how to identify these species you'll you'll be able to recognize it a little better and avoid these heavily concentrated uh, stands of ragweed and remember it's not the goldenrod that's giving you hay fever and making you sick this time of the year and I just hope that all of this talk about ragweed hasn't made you want to throw in the towel when it comes to gardening this fall. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember even though these tips and techniques are timeless there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.